Welcome back to the Retro Sports Gamer channel. And tonight, me and DT are going to break down our top 25 top retro sports games. We're going 25 through 11 first. And we have set some parameters for tonight. And I'm going to let DT explain those parameters for you. Well, once again, first of all, thanks for having me back. It's a pleasure to be on the, the program. But, uh, yeah, we're go we're, we decided, you know, I made an offhanded comment last time that NHL 94 was like my 20th favorite retro game. And then I was like, wait a second, what are the first 19? So we decided each make a list, 25. Now, I had a list, you had a list. At first, we realized that there was – mine kind of sort, sort of stopped. I had no N64 or PlayStation games. And yours kind of went – not I had a few of those, but also the Dreamcast. So we said, all right, compromise. The official, our official end of the retro era will be everything up to, but not including the Dreamcast. That's right. And uh, I think it's a good parameter to go by for sure. Uh, the Dreamcast, uh, I think we both know that's the first 128-bit system, as they call it. And that console kind of jumped the shark as far as the graphics, when that console was launched in 1999, you pretty much knew that the next generation was here and the arcade was officially at home. Yeah, I mean, it had so many things going for it. It brought the online play to the table. I think the Dreamcast was like, I think that's like the great system that got away in the history of gaming, really, because it just brought so much to the table, had such great games. If we had that in our list, I would have some from the Dreamcast for this list. But uh, we decided to keep it classic. Keep it old school. And the oldest game that either of us have on our list is a game, uh, Atari 2600. Uh, nothing nothing earlier than that. Right on. Yep. And, yeah, we – I mean, going before that, that's – talking about some pretty rudimentary action. I mean, technically the – the most famous video game ever is a sports game. That's probably Pong. Yeah. Um, didn't quite crack our top 25. No. We, we, we got to have a little something, something in our, in our games. Yeah, that one's a little bit before our time, I would say. Um, by the way, what do we uh, – I'm going to keep the tradition alive here. I got a Lagunitas IPA. Lagunitas. There's a brewery in Chicago that I've been to. Uh, it's it's quite the experience. I would recommend the tour if you're ever in Chicago. I'm drinking Founders All Day IPA. This one's from Michigan. Uh, right. These come in a nice 15 pack. I got it for like 14 bucks. You can't go wrong with that. And this beer only has 153 calories. That's key right there. So an IPA with that, you can't go wrong with it. That is going to keep you in shape so that you can dominate these retro games here. <laughs> uh, so when when you guys are watching this, the other thing that we did is we picked the games that we feel like personally are our top 25 games. We didn't go back and forth and say no and vote on it like this is the top. These are the top 25. It's pretty much what wherever your heart is, wherever whatever you think the top 25 is. That's what we're going to talk about today. So, DT. It seems like just to – it seems like we both – neither of us have any games on our list. They're like, oh, it seems like people really like that game. Like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think so. There was a few that you had that I, I haven't uh, looked that much into, but after well, looking into them, I'm like, I, I get this. So, you want to start out with your 25th game? Yeah, um, and I'll have to, I guess, pull this up here. I got to do a little technological technique here. Um, okay, so first off, uh, it's a little weird that I'm leading off with this because when it comes to wrestling games, that's your that's your world by a long shot versus mine. We'll we'll I guess find out about that more. We had a little debate over whether wrestling was like a fighting game. You were saying got to be wrestling's got to be sports, and I'm like, you know what? It's okay. I kind of decided it's cool because in wrestling you, you have an audience, you know. Yeah. That I think that for some reason for me that that made it okay for me. This is the only wrestling game on my list. It's pro wrestling for the NES. That's my number twenty-five game. 
So, uh, what I don't know. There's plenty of games I played after that. I wasn't a huge, like, big WWE, WWF fan. Um, but that game was, was pretty dope. You got some memorable characters like Starman and King Corn Karn and Fighter Hayabusa. So, uh, I mean, I'll just tell you the rest of that. You got the, the Amazon, uh, King Slender, and and uh, the, Gi- uh, the Giant Panther. Is it the Giant Panther? I'm gonna I'm gonna be so pissed if it's something else. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I'm not as familiar with that game, but uh, it looks like that one in comparison to some of the WWF games, even a WCW game on the NES. It just it figured out a, a good system where you can actually have separate moves for each player that aren't just like kick punch and then like what the hell do I do after that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the other NES games, you kind of just run around sort of haphazard. This kind of this game feels like there's some actual mechanics to it. I don't know, like there's some strategy. You can do different stuff. You could throw them against the ropes and throw them out of the ring, and and then there's like a you know twenty second count. Um, and you can jump off the turnstile. You can uh, you know do different moves like up plus a and up, down plus a, right plus a, left plus a. They all do different stuff when you're in a grapple. That's very. <laughs> Anything after that, you, you better have stuff like that. But it was a while before another game like reached, in my opinion, the level of pro wrestling for uh, for like some wrestling games. So that is a game that I still think is fun, but it 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 definitely scores a lot of points for being so epic for what it was in 1986. Yeah, I I agree. That's that that was top of the line right there, uh, pro wrestling black box game, I believe. Yep. On the NES, they yeah, were killing it, it with those. I didn't, you know, I didn't realize until recently, but like pro wrestling, Excite Bike, like baseball, they all have the same music at the beginning. It's like the Nintendo sports theme, right? So anyway, keep let's keep it rolling. What do you got? All right, so my twenty fifth. Before I get into my twenty fifth game, the other thing that we excluded was racing games. We figured that is kind of its own thing, at least for this. Yeah. So my game, 25th game, is uh, NBA Showtime. Boom. And, uh, I picked it on the PlayStation, and it's the 25th game. It, you can see the arcade cabinet right here. It's one of my favorite games. Uh, it's kind of like the culmination of all the NBA Jam games in one. Uh, since we excluded the Dreamcast, I couldn't leave it completely off the list because it's still in this era. The thing about the PlayStation version is it it's still better than the N64 version. You got all the Tim Kittrell announcer sound bites in this one. Uh, you know the mu- You got all the music, of course, because it's CD technology. The graphics are a little muddy compared to arcade and the Dreamcast, but it's still a great experience. I love the NBA on NBC Music. Uh, they refined the gameplay to the point where. It was a more offensive game, and uh, they also had a, a five push limit on fouls or or five pushes, and they would they would be fouls. And if you fouled five times, then a player would go to the free throw line on the opposite team, and that that shot would be worth three points if you made it. So it kind of balanced it out. It's more offensive compared to NBA hang time for sure, and uh, I just thought it was everything that the NBA Jam series should be at the time. And uh, also, this was one of the games that hung around in the arcades for a long time because they pretty much started to taper off in 99, 2000 after, you know. Yeah. So, so. I think uh, my memories of this game, you know, well, first of all, I'm 100% liking the inclusion of it in the list. It's quality. I just didn't have enough PT with it playing time to get it on my list. But uh, it, what I remember about it, it was just they tuned it to the point where it felt more like a basketball game than the previous NBA Jam titles. Just felt a little bit more basketball-ish, like a little more realistic. Yeah. Still had some guys flying around, but a little bit less so, a little more less, a little less ridiculous. And there was, I don't know, there seemed like there was a little more strategy involved. Good game. Um, I, they, I played this recently in the arcade, and I had a very enjoyable time. Cool. I'm glad you like this one. It was a Let's special. <laughs> I got this is. I got to figure out a better technique here. But here we go. Okay. Now, so what? I, what did I say last time? Number twenty. My twentieth favorite game, NHL '94. No, it's actually 
all the way down at number 24. Ooh. NHL 94, the legendary NHL 94. You have to explain this one. Well, first of all, I mean, just, there's a lot of good games, a lot of good sport, retro sports games. Um, the, so when I got, I got this kind of, I don't know, like I had, like I bought this in like 1995 and, you know, for like in the bargain bin, it wasn't like a hot title for whatever reason. I don't know. I liked it. I thought it was cool, but like 95 NHL 95 came out. And we like rented that a couple times. I remember playing that quite a bit, just liking it more. It's more fast paced, more arcadey. And then I moved on 96, really settled in 96. And then only years later, when I heard people were obsessed with this game, did I revisit it. And I kind of understand it. Like I get why this is the one that sort of lived on because it's just a, a better um, human on human competition. Like it's, there's more strategy involved. There's a, it's harder to score goals. There's no, not a lot of cheap goals. And even if, if you're anticipating someone's going to do some cheap stuff on you, you can use your control of the goalie and right. stop it. So like if somebody had a money play, like they just always hit you with the glove side or whatever, you can move over there and stop it. <laughs> there's one really bizarre thing about this game, which is that there's a huge bug involved where all the <laughs> – basically checking is supposed to be tied to your weight, Okay. Whoever the heaviest guy is supposed to win. Although, if you're controlling them, it's the opposite. So if you're if it's the computer, the big guy will win. If it's you, the little guy wins. Yeah, and that you know what? That's only in the Genesis version, though. Well, that's thank you, and that's the one I've been playing recently. So the Genesis playing, one. Yeah, that's the one I've been playing recently. Yeah. This, this is the one I had. Yeah, correct. So uh, anyway, so I, but great game. Um, you know, this is. I guess out of all the NHL games, this is the one that feels like the most sort of, uh, you know, good test of skill. Like, you know, it, there's just less kind of gimmicky weird stuff. This is just straight up hockey action. What holds it back for me, it's just a little slow. Not as fast as the other games that came after it. Fair enough. Great choice on the list. And for those watching in the chat, just let us know what you think of uh, the games we're choosing. If you like them, you don't like them, or if you would put another game on your list. Um, we're on the 24th game for each of us. So my next game is one that was very highly anticipated at the time is WWF Warzone, developed by Acclaim Sports. So unlike DT, I was huge in the WWF specifically. And as you can see, Stone Cold on the cover. This game was delayed quite a bit back then. Uh, it was delayed like maybe weeks, month and a half. And uh, the problem with that was I was having a, a wrestling birthday party at the time. And this, was, this was supposed to be the main event, and I didn't have the game yet. But it ended up coming out July 24th that year, right before the day before my birthday. And uh, it was able to to be part of the party. So we played three wrestling games. Uh, my mom ran a tournament for those, which was WrestleMania, the arcade game in your house and then Warzone. So mm. what an epic, what an epic weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it was an awesome party. Um, so this game came out the day before. So obviously it wasn't good at, it. I did not win the tournament for WWF Warzone, but if you can remember, this game looked really good at the time. Uh, it was ambitious as far as the commentary. The graphics were great. Uh, it took more of a fighting game uh, control style, which doesn't hold up very well for a wrestling game because of some of the other games I'll talk about later. Uh, so it's not as easy to go back and pick up and play this one. Uh, the other thing is in later versions like WWF Attitude, they include – Included the move list in the game. This one they don't. You had to buy the strategy guide. But of course, we got online now, so you could always look up the moves. But uh, if you want to experience a pretty good wrestling game, one of the best ones on the PlayStation, if you want to put a little time into learning the move list, this is an awesome game. Nice. So once again, wrestling is not my cup, not my expertise. Just for whatever reason, you know, 
I'm glad you enjoy it. I don't have any problem. It just wasn't my thing for whatever reason. This was the game I knew the least about on your list. And I checked out a video online. I was like, whoa, this game's pretty sweet. Like, uh, you know, it just looked good. And out of nowhere, like, all of a sudden, I watch it. They got, like, Stone Cold has, like, a, a line. He just – he just – he talked some junk right in the middle of the match. Yeah. Was I was like, what the heck is going that, like, that was That was pretty cool. So, Yeah, I think one of his lines is, someone's going to get their ass whipped. <laughs> pretty strong, pretty strong. All right. Yeah. What do we got next? We got, okay, so this is kind of weird. I bet you, it, so that was the one that you didn't know any about. This, I'm guessing, is probably maybe the one you knew the least about for me, or at least up there. It's clutch hitter but also kind of just a shout out to sports talk baseball so they're so this is sega arcade this, that's the official game for me okay 23 it's clutch hitter it's not a game i played a ton but i remember just thinking it was sweet in the arcade it's like 1992 okay so you know lots of good you know this is just, I'm just thinking back to being a kid and going in the arcade and seeing all these amazing games like NBA Jam, I think was maybe 92 for the arcade as well, maybe 93. Um, but Clutch Hit, it's just, it was just a sweet baseball game that had all the, you know, I don't think that there was an arcade game that had come out before that had all the pros. Didn't have the, t the uh, MLB license, but it had the MLB PA. And you know, just something about the mechanics of the game. It just looked really sweet. It felt good to hit it. And, uh, you know, the, like you throw a curveball, it would kind of dip a little bit. I don't know. It was pretty sweet. And then Sports Talk Baseball came out for the Genesis, which was a huge title. And uh, a pretty famous, you know, kind of a game that it was that kind of lived on in infamy for a while. Um, got it right here. It's – I. I kind of revisited it. It's not not as good as I remember it. It it, it uh, has some very subtle differences between this and Clutch Hitter. Yeah, but, the, the announcing's impressive on there though. The announcement was big for the time. The presentation of this game is very very slick. Um, it it's a pretty solid baseball game. It doesn't. It's it really. Unfortunately, it just it doesn't have the replay value because some of the other baseball games just have way better mechanic. Like just. Like the act, just it's just better competition. Like the pit, there's not a, there's limited pitching you can do on this game, but very sweet presentation. I I thought this was a, a pretty key game. It's a pretty legendary game to, to include on the list. Yeah, you can't you can't go wrong with sports talk baseball. It's not a game that I was familiar with growing up. Um, I had a, a Mort gave me a copy of that game, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look into it and play it some more. Uh, I'm interested in it. Uh, it, it did, in looking at some vi comparison videos, it is quite different from Clutch Hitter, but whenever you transition an arcade game to porting it on the Genesis Super Nintendo, you usually expect that. Yeah. So this is another good time to talk about. We, we each have kind of a, a blind spot here. We basically, seems like we're pretty dialed into the retro, like pretty much anything that happened in our era that we're dealing with here. But you, you didn't really have the Sega experience, Sega Genesis. Right. I did I, I did have a lot of crossover. So, like, there's some Super Nintendo games on my list where they could go either way, you know? Like, I had I had experiences on the Genesis with those games, but I just favored the Super Nintendo because that's what I had. Vice versa, though, I, I didn't really – I didn't have the PlayStation. PlayStation, huge blind spot for me. And I think – I mean, we're gonna, as we're going to find out, each system had a pretty huge library of sports games. So, yeah, for that, sure. luckily we each had, you know, at least between the two of us, we pretty much got it covered. This looks like so. I think so. I think so. <laughs> we had we had a message from the chat Weaves World when we were talking about uh, Warzone saying uh, Stone Cold was a guest referee for Michael Cole versus Jerry Lawler at WrestleMania. Uh, I'm reading the Roman numerals. Twenty seven. That doesn't sound like a match I would want to watch with those two guys, but okay. All right, so let's move on to my 23rd game on the list, and it's another game by Midway, which is two-on-two -two open ice challenge. Yeah. So this is another arcade game. So 
basically, if you like hockey, this is the hockey version of NBA Jam. Yeah. Uh, the play select screen looks a lot like it, and it's also two-on-two -two hockey, um, just like NBA Jam is. Uh, so it's an arcade-style game. There's, there's trick moves you can do you know, get on fire, that type of stuff. It wasn't a game that I grew up playing, uh, but once I found out about it and what it was all about and who made it, um, I got into this one. And this port on the PlayStation is pretty close to Arcade Perfect. Uh, so you did see a, a lot of arcade or close Arcade Perfect games starting with the PlayStation and N64. And this one's definitely one of them. It goes with the, you know, the 2D style um you know with the the scaling up and down the ice so it looks like it's 3d uh but this is this game's a lot of fun and if you like hockey especially in the 90s this is one you definitely have to play it's it yeah i i really didn't play it that much seattle not a hockey town as it turns out um maybe that's the reason why i never saw that game <laughs> I, I saw it, but very rarely it, it's too bad because that game uh is cool and it was fun. I was looking through the rosters, like all these duos. It's like legendary, you know, like Pavel Bure and Alexander McGilney and uh, I don't know, what are some of the other ones? Like Sergei Fedorov and Steve Eiserman. It's like, it's just like, that's, that's awesome. Like that's, a, that's your two, your two guys. And it's pretty cool. Uh, I wish I, I wish I had a chance to get into that back in the day. It's never too late. It's a quick pick up and play type game. Yeah. But I was impressed also with the way the PlayStation version looked because, like you said, it's a lot different than the uh, clutch hitter sports talk baseball. Right, right. Anyway, so my 22, the reason you've been hearing this annoying music, annoying noises, is because I got, I got track and field going on over here for the NES. Um, I guess officially I didn't really decide what version. Uh, the NES version is great. Uh, but you know, kind of the arcade version, that's in my opinion, the legendary one. Cause that came out like in, I, you know, I probably should look this up, but it was like, it was like 1983, something like that. So it's yeah. kind of pretty cool. And it's like a rock solid sports game. Uh, you know, really all it had was like, I think two buttons, you know, but it was just so, I don't know. It was, there's, there's been plenty of games like this since, but really all you did is just mash that. But it was fun. I mean, it's fun trying to run the 100-yard dash. Just All you do is just mash the buttons. all you do. But it's fun. Yeah, it's like the track and field games, it, depending on how you play them, you can you can get a little bit of a workout from them. <laughs> yeah. <I> mean, just, <laughs> just at the risk of looking like a total spaz in the arcade trying to be cool. And this, uh, isn't, this isn't one of them that has uh, compatibility with the power pad. Nope. Those games were wild. Um, all those, I mean, yeah, it's a, you know, I like that game too, that power pad game. And obviously track and field two is a pretty epic game uh, where you, you know, they've introduced all kinds of different stuff like swimming and uh, you know, Taekwondo and um, got so many events on that game. Um, canoe, you know, the, uh, the whitewater canoeing, but uh, this is pretty, pretty much you got, 100 yard dash, and then they introduced the hurdle. So you got to throw in the B button every now and then. Then you got, then all of a sudden you're doing the uh, the long jump. So there's a little more, then the triple jump. And then uh, the hammer throw is a, or is it the discus? Uh, what is it? Anyway, that gets pretty tough. There's a, the timing is very difficult. And then you got the epic high jump, which is the technique is off the charts, but it's, it's pretty fun trying to, get through it in the arcade, especially in the arcade when you got a quarter on the line. But even when you're playing at home, it's still really fun to try to see how far you can get and see what kind of numbers you can put. The javelin is in there too. Javelin's a good one. We got a couple messages from the chat. Uh, Troy says SmackDown was great. He's talking about a wrestling game uh, and that he spend a spent a lot of time on Warzone and Attitude. I talked about both of those. I'm Flo says track and field is my shit. Hell yeah, Flo. <laughs> Flo. So I, I bet Flo. Oh, yeah. Dude, wait, wait, I saw me and Flo were playing track and field in Detroit. So, yeah, good times. <laughs> Flo's a master, man. He can get after that freaking A button. I'll tell you what. I'm going to get something else on here because this music is a disaster. It's fun like the first eight times 
The next I can't hear it. I can't hear it. So the next twenty are less awesome. Yeah, you know what? I missed out on track and field on the NES, but uh, I didn't miss out on track and field games completely, and you'll find that out soon. Nice. Uh, so my twenty second game on the list is Tecmo Super Bowl for the Super Nintendo. Uh, this one very similar to the NES version, just yep. there are a lot of differences, but I'll talk about those. But what I liked about this version is the the way it looked. They added uh, touchbacks, which is just a basic feature of football. <laughs> uh, then they added snow and rain, so you had to play to the conditions. Uh, and, it, it look, and it looked better. It looked better than the NES version. Uh, it was... It was more polished as far as its looks. They added extra cut scenes for 300 yards passing, 150 yards receiving, yep. 100 yards rushing. So that was pretty cool. It felt rewarding to see those cut scenes. Uh, now, to talk about some of the differences and why it's not uh, on the same pedestal as the NES version is because, one, they took out the profile pictures. So to me, yeah. that's... It seems like laziness. So you just have you just have helmets instead of the profile pictures. The profile pictures were awesome in Tecmo Super Bowl. The other thing is some of the music in this game really sucks, especially the <laughs> the menu music. Oh my gosh! It's it's just a loop. It's just not good. Yeah, it's really not good. I mean, they they kept some of the old music from the NES version, which was a good idea, and they just made it sound different. Um, but that uh, that menu music's pretty bad, so yeah. you get some of that. And then the the big thing I would say the gameplay is not the same because they try to make it a little bit more simulation like, and the player's speed is nerfed. Yes, so it, you don't. It doesn't have that arcade style feel, but it still plays similar to the NES version, where it's just like it's just more of a conservative type Tecmo Super Bowl, I would say. Uh, the way you play it, just because the players don't get down the field fast enough. So, you know, you kind of have to grind it up the field. So, yeah, I, I mean, you pretty much hit it exactly. Like I cannot get anything to work over here, but that's okay. That was a really good idea to have something going on in the background, but it hasn't panned out. <laughs> so you pretty much hit it exactly all the big notes for me. Um, so this game did not make my top 25. However, it's definitely one of my top 25 favorite games because it's really not that much different than Tecmo Super Bowl for the NES. But just, I mean, at the time, I played it a ton, obviously. It was probably the most exciting I've ever been for any game that ever came out. I remember calling Toys R Us like on a bi-weekly basis just to see <laughs> like, if they had it in. And I loved it. You know, it was great to have a new Tecmo Super Bowl game. Um and yeah, I mean, it, it was a pretty damn fun game and all the additions were, were great, but I've just over the years become so upset with this game that I, I couldn't put it on my top 25 today. Just, it just, it's been a mounting thing for me. Just, you know, why did they cut down all the speed? That was so much fun. And, you know, there's so many epic players in Tecmo Super Bowl for the NES Right. And all of a sudden, it, it's like if you look at it, it's like the, all the running backs. There's like three or four good running backs in the game, and the rest of them are all crap. You know, it's just yeah. you end up having to just chuck it into coverage nonstop. <laughs> and it, you know, even the receivers aren't really that fast. And it's like what? It's just a slog. And then, but the main and they got rid of the faces. That was key. I mean, you pretty much hit on it. But it's just. And then the, the here's the here's the thing though. Here's the main reason. Every time the Tecmo wants, you know, like when they made a, the, what's that, the throwback version? They, they, right. they made a couple different versions. They always base it off the Super Nintendo game. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they, they think that that's the definitive version. It might have sold better than the NES version. Or they just think, oh, this is, what's the big difference? They probably don't realize, you know, it's very, the differences are very subtle. So it makes sense that they would go to that direction, but it, it just, ticks me off you know we haven't had like they want to you know bring Tecmo Super Bowl back but they keep screwing it up over and over again <laughs> yeah. well what they what they need to do is what uh Sega did to create Sonic Mania is they just hired uh, a hacker 
that would hack Sonic games. Yeah. And he's the one who actually developed Sonic Mania, and now people are saying it's the best Sonic experience they ever had. So if Tecmo wants to get the game right and they want it the way the players want it in the U.S., then they need to hire one of the guys that are hacking the game to make it the experience we want. I know his name is David Brood. That's the guy. You yeah. want to, that's the guy you want to head the project. Anyway, um, so um, I put double dribble on. Did not make the top twenty-five. It was close. I'm hoping they'll be super entertaining for people to look at in the background, or maybe they'll just see lines. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what do you got for uh, – where are we at here? You're on the, the 21st game. Okay. So, uh, we're kind of – very similar situation. But number 21, I got Tecmo Super Bowl three. So, I had this game for the Super Nintendo. Um, it's a very similar – a lot of really great additions. Um, number one key, – most key thing, create a player. Uh, that was fun. You could make a game. This was actually a really big deal in like 1996 when this game came out, 95 or 96. And, uh, you know, you, you would make a guy, he was basically crap, but he, you know, you can maybe give him like one really good rating, like hitting power or something, and then throw him on your team and he would get points for doing cool stuff over the course of the season. By the end of the season, he, he could maybe be potentially a beast. Um, it was pretty fun. Um, and, you know, the just lots of really cool graphics, lots of weird cut scenes and stuff. And, uh, you know, you, they had a, like a, some different abilities, like this, the, the, uh, the balance, body balance that would control if you do a spin move. It's like Barry Sanders was had like off the charts, body balance. And then it, then the one of my favorite things, though, is that the hitting power, sometimes if it was if you were that much stronger, guy, you could still like what we call popcorn a guy. But right. if you were just like pretty much like a lot stronger than a guy, but not like overwhelmingly strong, you would kind of drag him. Like if you're a ball carrier, you would you would kind of like he would he would he would grab you, but you would kind of be dragging him very slowly, you know, which was just an awesome element. Sometimes you could break that tackle, but most of the time you you know you get it was he'd be on you long enough that someone else could come tackle you. Just a really cool addition to the gameplay. Um on the whole, though, they got rid of some of the very subtle things that made the original great. Like the passing game was a little less uh, um, smooth. You know, you didn't have like the jump, you know, the timing patterns. And, you know, you, they added like a lob pass that you could do. Um, but like it just wasn't as smooth. Like there's just some things about the gameplay that were kind of meh. And then the main thing, the main reason I don't like this game as much is that the conditions were just changed wildly every quarter. So you got your quarterback could be an excellent, and then the next quarter he's in bad, and then back to I made and the bat there's so many backups that uh you know that you had to check every single dude on your roster every single quarter. It just and it made it just made the games take forever. Right. So and even had backup defensive players. So each guy is checking every guy on his roster every quarter for conditions and then doing the math to figure out who they want to play. That's a bit much. Yeah. Other than that, decent game, a lot of good memories. Comes in number 21, feel pretty good about that. Yeah, I think because of the way you select the plays too, it's it's a slower-paced game. Yep. There's a yeah, few more players on it. Um, Two different playbooks, so. It might take just as long as the play itself. Uh, you know, th this is a game that I just completely missed out on. Uh, my my next game that I'll talk about kind of caught my attention as opposed to something like this. Uh, I guess the marketing just wasn't there for it. Didn't really know anyone talking about Tecmo Super Bowl three. Uh, watching the guys that do the No Frills Tough Guy League. Uh, that's that's an experience you want to check out. They're on Twitch. Uh, they run seasons where they play for three straight days and do a whole. Uh, they they do a whole season with uh, ten guys. So that's definitely worth checking out. This is a game I want to look more into, but it's 
just not it's just not one that's on my list because I haven't played it enough. So the Tecmo but, two Tecmo two did not make my list. Tecmo Super Bowl two special edition and Tecmo Super Bowl three final edition. Tecmo two is kind of in between Tecmo one and Tecmo three as far as gameplay. They both just for had like limited releases. Like yeah, just kind of here you go. Here's a game, and then it, there you couldn't find it. It was like gone, like right away. Both both editions. It made no sense. Like obviously they had to know there was a big market for Tecmo Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. and they were and they were pretty good games too. Like I played the the crap out of both of them. Right. They were fun. They were really good. And I mean, for whatever reason, they just neither of them really had a wide release or yeah you're right there was zero marketing like it was like underground it was like one day there's tecmo 2 and i'm like what come on what are we dealing with here we got tecmo 2 i mean if i had even known this was a thing i'd be all over that i, I had to get that one for genesis even though i preferred getting games for super nintendo just because i couldn't find it for super nintendo very bizarre but uh anyways moving on what do you got what do you got for 21 here so this is this is why I didn't really get into Tecmo Super Bowl three or two, um, is because of Madden ninety seven on Super Nintendo. Uh, I think by this point, uh, I realized EA Sports was doing big things with their sports games, and this is when I made the jump over to the more uh, simulation type experience with Madden ninety seven. Madden ninety seven. Uh, I believe this was a Christmas gift that I got from my grandparents. Uh, the music is incredible. Through, did they not? I, I got more games for Christmas than my grandmother and grandfather. They were they just they were like, "What do you want? I want a I want a friggin' game." They they make it happen anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, that they they definitely made it happen. So this one, Madden '97, the music is incredible in this version. They got things like Training Camp. Uh, the the gameplay is pretty solid. I mean, for the Super Nintendo, this game also came out on the PlayStation at the time. But uh, you know, for me, you know, my parents are still trying to push me towards the keep just keep that Super Nintendo thing you got there. Yeah, and play some '97. But I definitely wasn't disappointed with this game. Yeah. Uh, replayability wise, it's kind of an in the middle type of sports game. It's not bad. It's not great, but you know, the music's enjoyable and it's a good throwback game, but this is this is when I started to realize EA Sports was doing it and Madden's ninety seven's a good game to to pick up and take a look at. Absolutely. So I did not ha play that game, um, maybe at all, but uh I did have a lot of Madden game you know, back in the day. I do have I have zero Madden games on my top twenty five, which seems wild. I actually like all the Madden games. Like I don't have any beef with Madden. I'm a hardcore Tecmo guy. Like I'm a major Tecmo dude, but uh, it's not really because I don't like Madden. But some of the reasons I don't like Madden are you can see our strengths in Tecmo, such as like the passing game is pretty, just kind of throw it up there. Hope something good happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the, the routes are precise. Yeah. But then here's the thing though. I did, you know, I kind of did some research to kind of get ready for this, and I realized that by '97, they Madden had it figured out. The passing was a little more precise. Like receivers would run really fast and then stop and catch the ball. Like it kind of looked legit. Whereas before, they would just, you know, it was there was too much luck involved. It was hard to really figure out who was open unless they were wide open. Right. You know, it, it just wasn't. Great. Like, I always liked running on Madden. Like, it was fun, especially, like, if you had a, a friend with you, and they could be the blocker, and then, you you know, you, you, you know, you, then you have all these crazy, you know, these noises, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, pa passing was always a problem for me, but I, I realized, I didn't have Madden 97, but you'll see, I, I agree, the EA was getting it going with the football around this time. Well, didn't, didn't Madden also have the passing windows at one time? Yeah, I mean, the, I had the first one for the Super Nintendo, which was known for, as Madden 92 for the Genesis. But uh, the one for the Super Nintendo, I had the, just, it was like half the screen, A, B, C, or a Y, B, A. And it's just like, okay, 
but and it didn't even tell you anything. It was just like, all right, there's a guy running. I don't even know where the hell he is on the field. <laughs> Got to make a decision though. You kind of it was. I mean, it was just it was fun, it was cool. There's a lot of really cool things about Madden games back in those days, but at the end of the day, they, none of them made my list. And some of that has to do with not having a chance to play them. Some of the later ones, but uh, um, yeah, I I will admit though that you know in the play once '97 rolled around, and then all those PlayStation games, and then the end some of the N64, all the N64 Maddens, like those are pretty good games. Yeah, I agree. So solid series overall. We forgive you for not putting any on the list. Hey, and if you're listening. All, all we've done so far is just bonus games. You know, the original idea was let's go top 20, and we realized, nah, we got to get some more of these games in the mix. <laughs> so, all right, so here's what, instead of Madden, uh, I was a big fan of the Sega football games, the uh, Sega sports. They were all awesome. I had uh, 94, 95, and then... 96, which was prime time. That was uh, the Deion Sanders uh, endorsed game. But I, I decided to put forth basically representing that whole era of games, which I think is the, the best version is NFL 95. Um, basically, it just was a very solid, you know, um, had all the NFL and the NFL PA and, uh, you know, had good amount of plays. It was a little bit better. It still had the same issue, though, with Madden as far as you kind of just would throw it and just hope something good happened. And kinda, it wasn't really 100% clear why somebody would catch it or intercept it, but it was a little bit better than Madden. And running was good. You had a lot of different buttons you could throw out there. You could have the speed burst. You had a spin move and a hurdle. And uh, um, the best part, though, was that after the play, after you hit somebody, you, you could hit a button. And your guy would talk junk. He'd say something yeah, like, yeah. he'd be like, where are you going? Or, Woo! Yeah, I remember that. It was fun, man. Uh, Sega was, you know, Sega Genesis was an absolute haven for sports games. Like, there just was not, there was tons of options. And they were, I mean, they were, they were rock solid. Especially, I mean, the Sega, bo- boosted most, mostly by the Sega sports brand, which was, you know, what's obviously what that was what Super Nintendo did not have access to. Yeah, I, I played this game some back in the day. Uh, my friend Clint's dad had a lot of football games. So he had Joe Montana football 94. And I thought 95 was a lot better than that version. Uh, just so. something something about it visually and the, the sound. Uh, the gameplay even a little bit sharper on the graphics. It, it was just more attractive to play in NHL 95 than the Joe Montana Football 94 on Sega Genesis. So good choice on that one. Yep, yep. Right on, right on. What do you got? You're breaking in the top 20, Tom. What's going on? Top 20, another wrestling game. And this one is WWF WrestleMania, the arcade game. Uh I had this arcade cabinet in my garage at uh, my apartment in Chicago for a while. That's- yes, this one, this one's just a lot of fun. It's fast action. Uh, some would say this is more of a fighting game, and it is by control scheme. Uh, it looks like Midway kind of took their uh, engine from Mortal Kombat and kind of used it in this game. Of course, the developers acclaim on this one. They did a lot of the ports for Midway at the time. Uh, this, but the thing I like about this one is it's just over the top action and it's quick. You know, you could get through matches really fast. Some wrestling games, they would just drag on way too long in the matches. And this one was, you got to win two out of three to, to win the match. So it was more like a fighting style experience, but they, they did add the wrestling elements that you would need. Like you can go up and down on the ring, run off the turnbuckle, or, and then you could jump out of the ring. Uh, you can even do kickouts at times. So you're, you're not like, it's not just like you lose all your power and that's it. Sometimes you could kick out and you got one last chance to beat your opponent. But if you get hit once, you're pretty much done. Yeah. Uh, nice. So, and I, you know, 
so wait, so going back to the arcade, was this that? Do you know about the history of the arcade like cabinet? Like, isn't there like an older version from the arcade, or was this is that kind of this? Is this basically the same game? I, I'm not sure. I don't think there's an older version. There are quite a few differences between all of the versions of the game. Yeah. Uh, I think I have all of them. The Super Nintendo one, it only has six characters, and there's major frame rate issues. I don't recommend that one at all. I remember hearing that that game was butt. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a lot. It was sick. Like it was really good. Yeah the the one the one on the Genesis is much better actually. It has all the characters. Doesn't have the same frame rate issues. Yeah. It also was on the 32x. I didn't play that version. Uh, it's the PlayStation one though is pretty close to the arcade as far as the gameplay, the sound, everything. The one thing though I do like about the arcade cabinet is it actually has arcade leaderboards, unlike the PlayStation one. So you have like win streak and all that type of stuff, whereas the PlayStation version didn't have that. But back in the day when they had these greatest hits for twenty bucks, this I mean I loved buying this game for 20 bucks i thought it was a great deal and yeah. that's why it makes the list I, i'd say if i have a beef with wrestling games it's uh that they a lot of times they become a, a total grind a total stalemate and it doesn't seem like there's any end in sight well you know you know you've played wrestling games where both opponents are completely fatigued and then yeah. you're just like how do you pin them like what's the what's the pin button happens a lot happens a lot it happened all the way back to like i i used to play that wrestlemania game for uh the first one for the nes and that game you, that was a major grind uh that game was epic when it came out you had a, you know all the big uh wrestlers like hulk and andre the giant but try playing that now oh my god yeah, it's a rough one <laughs> good pick all right what do we got here 19 um Okay, so this is, I bet you this one was, pardon the pun, a little bit of a curveball for you. Um, got baseball, got Super Baseball Simulator 1000. So this game actually did come out in it for the NES, and then it came out. I didn't, I didn't really play that one much. This is Super Baseball Simulator 1000. Um, just kind of a wacky sports title. Um, Decent baseball action, serviceable baseball action. But what was awesome was that you each, you could give each player a, a special ability that you could use your special points for. And it was crazy stuff like, you know, just like superpower or like, you know, things where you hit it and it would go squirrely. That was the squirrel hit. Yeah. Or you hit it and it was a rocket. It would go and it would hit the guy and it would take him all the way to the wall, like just a, a missile that was – just off the ground, it would, and if he caught it, he he get ridden to the wall. Sometimes you you'd hit the shortstop, you you hit a huge hit, and you hit the shortstop, he'd take the left fielder to the wall. So you got nobody over there. The center, then they're both knocked out, and the center fielder would have to come over and grab it. The pitchers had all kinds of crazy stuff. Like you could do a pitch where you threw it, you hit a like the A button or something, and the ball would skip a little bit of distance. You know. So I'm, <laughs> You did time it right. That was a pretty devastating pitch. The classic, though, was sometimes we do that one, and the other guy would be anticipating it, and then we wouldn't even press the button. And then you, you, the slowest changeup of all time would go by and just, you know, first strike. Anyway, <laughs> game was a blast. You could, there was one where you could make it just stop. I mean, you could do a squirrely pitch, or you could, uh, you know, they had, there was endless. There was one where you could hit it. It, was, it would blow up it would, and explode the guy, you know, if he tried to catch it. You could use points to use a special catch. So, you know, the, but once you ran out of points, you, you, it was just down to your guys' abilities. Um, you know, guys would get tired and stuff. Anyway, great times. Just a really fun arcade title. But like I said, it had some, at its foundation, there was a decent baseball game in there. So that was a really fun game that me and my friends played a lot back in the day. Yeah, this, this one I totally missed out on. But I will say, with all the competition with baseball games, to have one that has just a bunch of wacky power-ups makes a lot of sense. And that's probably why it stood out from the from the rest of them at the time. Yeah. It was about, and we, you can do pennant race, um, play in different, like, they had, you know, a couple different stadiums. 
it was it was at its core a good baseball game but then when he it really implemented the wacky stuff good like there were some really good moments and there was definitely some cheap stuff that would happen over the course of a game but for the most part it it was pretty balanced because you could set the amount of points that you could use towards that kind of thing so and the worst was like when you give yourself like a 10 point power hit you know where you if you made contact you know home run and then you whiff so like <laughs> you may have like yeah. 100 points for the day and you know you just take a big swing and a miss that's 10 points down the drain it was yeah, a good time that can't feel good yeah what do you got for 19. 19 so you talked about track and field on the nes i have a long box playstation game international track and field developed by konami got some long box action there yes a- so this was a game i'm sure that many people could have missed out on it was a early PlayStation game, it's track and field. Uh, But this, you know, it came out around the time that uh, the 96 Olympics were going on. I feel like that's when I really paid more attention to the Olympics and was getting into it. But anyways, this was a game that uh, also my friend Clint had. And basically what we do is uh, in the summertime, go swimming at his house and then come in and play some video games after we got too much sun. An international track and field. It has a whole bunch of different events. It's also a button masher, but each 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 uh, event is basically like a mini game, and there's there's different ways that you can be successful at each event. So they're not all exactly the same. Some are more fun than others. But the cool thing about this one is you could play two player. You're playing against each other, but you're also playing with each other, or or co op to try to get through all the events. So like, say if me and you were playing together, yeah. we both didn't qualify or place, then we would have to do that event over. So we couldn't even finish the game unless one of us qualified for that event. So there were certain events like Javelin where you have to, you have to like either use these two fingers. I always use my thumb on the thumbs on these type of games, but, uh, like the one event javelin because you had to press X at the same time you're hitting circled square. I can never pass that one. So I needed my friend to always pass that event, but I can still beat him in the game overall possibly, but I could not pass that event, but this is a good one. The graphics are just, it's an early PlayStation game. It's not really about the graphics, but the gameplay is sharp. And this is a good track and field game. You can play through all the events in like a half hour and it's a lot of fun. Nice. Nice one. Yeah, that's, I mean, it sounds like a good time. Once again, PlayStation, big blind spot for me, and that is unfortunate. Uh, i tell you what's not a blind spot, though, is the Nintendo system, my all-time probably most played system. Well, with the possible exception of Super Nintendo. I don't know. But we got it here. I just threw this on. It's ice hockey. The legendary ice hockey for the NES. That's my number 18 game. Um, what I could say, this is a Nintendo game. There's, you know, basically, I think every team is the same. as international hockey squads. Czechoslovakia made the cut. Uh, you know, you got USA, Russia, Canada. But really, it just comes down to the one dynamic of the game. And it's an epic. It's, it was a game changer at the time. Fat guy, medium guy, skinny guy. Choose your lineup. Endless possibilities. You know, the obviously, the skinny guy was quick. The fat, the medium guy was middle, was middle of the road, and the fat guy could destroy you, especially if he's running up against the skinny guy. But he wasn't so fast. So, um, I mean, that right there was was pretty huge. The gameplay is good. Um, you know, you, you move your goalie around. It, it's it's pretty pretty. It ends up being a pretty good game. I've seen some guys absolutely dominate in this game. I'm not great at this game. I've I, my Canadian buddies, the Allison brothers, they they dominate me on this. Needless to say, they're not even big hockey fans, but just the Canadian blood. Um, what's the, the other main thing though is there is there is some fighting involved, and it kind of happens in sort of a random fun way. Like it, it's it seems like it's just very natural. Like there's like a build up. Like there'll be like an extra hit in there, and then like you could just it just <laughs> like guys have these little beefs. And then all of a sudden, everybody's in there, and it's just a mass of humanity. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the ref goes into the pile, 
and pulls one guy out. And you hope <laughs> it's not your guy. It's just, uh, I mean, it, it, it is pretty, it's pretty fun, man. This is, this one had to make the list just for the kind of the epicness of, I mean, it's just, it's Nintendo fun and just, it's a good one. Yeah. I think with, with ice hockey, the, the player thing, like you talked about adds a lot of depth that's not in other hockey games. Uh, I always wonder how successful Nintendo would be with sports games if they chose to like go for the license for the the professional sports. Because, great, great mystery. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, at the beginning of the NES, they were killing it with their sports games. You know, yeah. they were the best ones out there, but they didn't. They did do some deals later on with some of the the major sports, but. Uh, it's not. It hasn't been one of their focuses, and right. I think if it if it was, they could they could have potentially dominated the market at some point. But they've they didn't go that route. But ice hockey's a good game. Uh, one of the games that I'll talk about later caught my attention more than that one. That's why it's not on my list. But it's a great game overall, and yeah. a lot of people like it. And it's a cheap game to buy if you want to pick it up. Yeah, it was readily available. It's just one of those ones. Some of the NES games. It's like they're just they're classics, but like somehow they're just really easy to find, and then others are less so, but impossible to find. It's a weird deal. Same with Super Nintendo. Anyway, if you're into collecting, that's a really weird and fun topic that I don't really know as much about as I uh, as I feel comfortable talking about. But uh, yeah. Anyway, what do you got? What do you, what's coming up next down the pipe? I'm gonna keep this music's less annoying. I'm gonna keep this one on. I'm gonna keep the ice hockey going in the background all right so i got back-to-back games developed by uh konami and it's uh nba give and go on super nintendo nice so this is a port of an arcade game called run and gun right um and run and gun didn't have the nba license yeah this but, is interesting yeah so in this case i would say the super nintendo version is actually better than the arcade because of that reason and they did they did an excellent job porting this over that that's that's the big thing i mean it plays pretty much like the arcade version uh if nba jam wasn't such a big thing back in the the era that this game came out this could have easily dominated the arcade basketball market it's a really good game uh it has the the view that a lot of people like to play on now, which is like the court or the vertical up and down the court type view, as opposed to like the TV broadcast view. Um, usually I don't like to play like that, but for this game, I don't mind it for some reason. Uh, it's a lot of fun. There's a, there's a lot of offense in, in this version. If I had to knock it for anything, it's just that there's no differentiation in player height at all. Like Muggsy Bogues, is the same height as Alonzo Mourning. Yeah. But uh, this is an enjoyable game for me, and that's why it makes number 18. I 100% agree that that game is just fun to play. Like, just running up and down the floor, it's fast-paced. You pull off some sick alley-oops. You know, it's just solid. It just looks cool. It's just a good arcade game. And then, yeah, I, I can see why you put the super the uh, the port even though give and go, how many give and go plays did you run on that game? Probably not that many. Run and gun is a way better name for for the game. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like it's back and forth. My beef with that, I played that game not very much, so maybe I didn't quite latch onto it like I maybe could have. But my beef with that game is the same with your beef. I it jumped the shark for me when I was starting pulling off alley oops and Steve Scheffler for the Sonics was jumping up, grabbing it, and throwing it down on people. I was like, nah, that's not that's not his game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. They, they they didn't have uh you know pretty much all the players it seemed like they all pretty much played the same. It, yeah and that that's fine. I mean they're definitely there what the super when they brought the NBA guys in the mix, that definitely added some and there definitely had to have been some there was some stats on it if I recall. But Everybody was pretty good. Everybody was pretty darn athletic. And everybody was pretty beefy. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, whatever, though. I mean, that's 
that's why it's number 18. But I fully support you including that because it definitely was just a very, you know, fun experience overall. So, uh, yeah, they are, it's so weird that they switched up to give and go. Why didn't they just stick with run and gun? Yeah, I don't know what the decision was for that. Uh, give and go is a common move you can pull off in uh, basketball, but <laughs> – it, it seems more like a run and gun type game than a give and go. <laughs> I feel like give and go is a little more methodical. And that's not yeah. Like if at least it's better than if they called pick and roll. That would have not made any sense. <laughs> uh, so uh, seventeen, moving into the elite category for me. I'd say everything up to this point. I mean, pretty much the rest of these are like, I'm pretty pumped. Like if somebody wanted to play these today, I'm like, yeah, let's go. So I got number 17. It's Base Wars for the NES. This is one of those ones that every now and then I'll throw this out there and so it'll just be like, wait, what? Someone will just be like, what are you, huh? I don't remember that game. This is like a late NES game. You know, some of those late NES games got lost in the shuffle. Uh, this is uh, by Ultra. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, you, you start, you, when you do the, you know, you, Let's start with the obvious. It's it's robots playing baseball, okay? And uh, what's fun about it is they each have different battle style. There's like four different types of robot you can build. You know, you got the tank guy. You got the just straight up robot, like humanoid type guy. You got the, the hovering guy. And you got one with the, the motorcycle bottom, you know, the wheel. And they all had different moves. And then... Some of them had a special weapon. It's like a sword or a gun or a, uh, you know, something. they had this one thing called the battle gimmick, which was basically they'd, they'd punch their hand out and it would go like out all the way across the screen and hit you. And uh, it was fun. Um, the baseball action, the pitcher hitter duel was solid because you could really crank up some some of the pitchers who could really, you know, shoot the baseball out of their gun pretty freaking fast and get wild curveballs and stuff. Then you would hit it and it would get a little confusing what the hell was going out on the field. It's one of those ones where the camera angle just sucked. It's probably the reason that baseball stars isn't on either of our lists. It was a lot more in base wars. But uh, then you would have a freaking battle on the base path, though. And (laughs) if you – if you got enough battles and lost enough battles, your your robot would explode. <laughs> so now you have eight guys. And then, you know, if you got down to like six guys, it was a, a forfeit. But uh, that was pretty key. Cause like you could be losing by like eight runs or something. If you got 10 runs, you're out. But you'd be like, you know what? Switching up the strategy, going for each base. I'm going to just go for the battle. And try to knock them out, you know, just try to win the battle, you know, there's multiple ways to win. So, and then the other thing was you can do a season where you all your robots start as just like base robots with no abilities. Then you could build them up, you know, increase their hitting, increase their speed, increase their, you know, battle ability, increase their hit points and stuff. So, I mean, it was, it was pretty, a pretty great. This was one of those ones that, you know, was, it was a perfect game to play with some friends, you know, do like get, you know, a season going where he's controlling this team and you're controlling this team. And you, you could put in all the names of all your friends or one time I had all this, I had a team that was all sports center anchors. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I just remember that being a pretty classic. I had Chris Berman was my cleanup hitter. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it was a good, it was a good one to play. And then the you know, pennant race would get pretty exciting. So um, that's, that's then now we're into the category where I'm like, yeah, Somebody wants to play one of these games, like, where are you playing? Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's very similar with uh, the strategy that you're talking about with uh, Mutant League football, Mutant League hockey, where you don't necessarily have to score more than the other team. You could just, you know, blow them up. This blast of an oblivion. Yeah. And I guess since it's robots, it's okay. Nintendo's fine with it. If it was people, probably not so much. Yeah. Uh, not, yeah. It's, but then I, then I think that they're, you know, we're not quite maybe there yet. This, this probably is the future though of baseball. <laughs> yeah. No, but th- that, that game, it also looks really good for an NES game. Like there's a lot of attention to detail. Um, I would say it's, it's for a baseball game. It's got one of the better 
graphics out there on the NES. Yeah, I mean it's it's crazy. You know, the the late NES games are pretty sweet. Of course, I probably can't get any of these freaking things to work. There we go. Yeah. Um, well, this is going to do this. All this is a stupid game to put in. Anyway, yeah, they, it's got pretty sweet. You see the cyborg there? It gives you the stats. This is a good one. What do you got for seventeen? You better you better start bringing out because I'm I'm getting getting pretty pumped here. So I'm not I'm not quite to that point that you're at where I'm saying let's anyone who wants to play this game anytime let's go. Uh, but I'll play any sports game pretty much. So uh, this one's NFL Game Day '98 on the PlayStation. So you know PlayStation might be a blind spot for you, but if you played the PlayStation back in this days, this I'm game fully aware of the legacy of this game. Keep going though. At the time, this game looked better than any other football game out there. Yep. Uh, it looked way better than its predecessor, Game Day '97. It that that game just looked muddy graphics. Yeah. This version, it looked better than any Madden game ever on the Nintendo 64. Uh, you know, I I don't know exactly how they pulled it off, but this game looked great. And the other thing that they did in this one is the sound was incredible. They didn't concentrate on like having commentators. They had a PA announcer and uh, pretty much you can, you can hear the grunts of the players and stuff. Uh, and they also had good, good music in this game that really f made you feel like you're playing a football game, like it's NFL on Fox or something like that, but it was its own unique music. Uh, so this, this one just at the time, it just blew you away. Is it still a good football game today? I would say it's in the same category as the Madden 97 game, where it's a solid simulation experience, but somewhere in the middle. Uh, you know, the player movements in this one, they're, they're a little bit more robotic compared to games, simulation games today. Uh, but you could still have a lot of fun with this one. And if you just compare it to, you know, Game Day 97 or just, you know, Madden 64, Madden 99, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about as far as the graphics. And, uh, you know, pulling off juke moves with Barry Sanders, running into some people with Jerome Bettis on the cover. A lot of fun. Lo loved this game. Played it a lot back in its day. I, uh, I'm aware I've only played a couple times, but I, I can tell you that it is a smooth game. It has a good flow to, you know, it's just a good gameplay. Looks good. Guys seem to operate in, you know, ways that make sense. You know what I mean? Like it, it really, it was a, it was a good, you know, kind of moved the bar for football games for sure. Uh, good choice. I, it, you know, would you want to play it now? Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe not, but I do a lot worse. It's, it's, uh, it's the 989 sports. That that was kind of like when Sega was doing their thing for the Genesis. Like they it was like, okay, if we got a PlayStation. We got a whole slew of quality sports games that we can get after here. Right. That, that was a big deal for PlayStation. When I played this game, that was probably like that was probably one of the most jealous I've ever been that I didn't have a PlayStation. Yeah, they they were cranking out the sports titles. I would say Game Day was probably their best one. I also like the MLB series, but for some reason that one didn't look as good. Uh, shootout was just in the middle. It was okay, but game day was where it was at on the Sony PlayStation. Right on, right on. Okay, what do we got? Number 16 moving along. We got a game that nobody freaking knows about at all. It's definitely it's got one of the illest covers you'll ever see. I've been waiting to hand this out as a prize at one of my Tecmo tournaments. Um, it's NBA Action 94. We've got Kendall Gill just going skyward for a huge jam on this one, which obviously elevates this quite highly. Um, so this is, you know, Sega Sports. They were in the zone, basically, at this juncture in time. And uh, they had uh, – I'm just reading the, the – it's all, how much fun are boxes, you know, just to kind of look at, by the way. Right. Um, they have Marv Albert, commentator for NBA on NBC. And uh, he had some pretty sweet lines in this game. 
uh, <laughs> even better in the next one that came after. But, uh, you know, just this game had 10 man rosters for every NBA team, a pretty big deal at the time. And it was good. I think you'd like this game cause it's a, it's pretty fast. You know what I mean? Like, uh, pretty responsive. Um, the one weird thing was if you shot the ball, you want it, it was really hard to get at the top of the jump, but if you did, the orange ball would turn just like white. It would just be a white globe, which was pretty lame, but it let you know that you yeah. hit it right at the top of the jump. And usually that was Drano when you got that. Um, and <laughs> it definitely guys were better than other guys. Like, you know, for whatever, like Chris Weber was like a rebounding beast. You know, Sean Kemp, Dominic Wilkins, those guys, they clearly had like, they seemed to dunk it more often. But the, the thing that kind of holds it back, but also kind of keeps it a legendary status for me, is that no one sucks on the game. You know, there wasn't that much, there's no ratings. But so it's, it, you know, that some guys are better than others, but they were only just a little bit better. They were just a little bit faster, a little bit better shooters. Guys like the legendary uh, Jay Gittinger, the center for the Cavs. Never heard of him. Well, neither has anybody else ever. He probably averaged like 1.5 points per game for his career. He, you know, was pretty pretty solid. And then the guy, LeBradford Smith, backup guard for the Bullets. He was just a terror on that game. Anyways. You're bringing up some guys right now. Those are some guys. <laughs> Yeah, so you could you could that was maybe the one thing about it that I didn't like, but it also kind of at the end of the day, it's pretty fun when guys that nobody's ever heard of just start getting hot and <laughs> going for 20, 30 <laughs> points. Uh, you know, you just you, you keep feeling oh, little Bradford Smith. I mean, it's just it's hard not to feel little Bradford when you know he's getting hot. So, but no, I, it's just kind of this weird game that you. Once you go, it shows you it's like a diagonal view. And then when you cross half court, the whole thing just switches to the other. Um, probably like the first like time you anybody will play. If somebody went back and played it right now, they'd be like, I don't think I like this. But then once you kind of get into the gameplay, it's like pretty balanced and a fun game to play against somebody. And the one the one cool thing about that game versus just about any other sports game, the freaking computer can play. So you can actually go and have a competitive game. I feel like most sports games, for the most part, I mean, nowadays you can put the difficulty level up, but back in the day, you kind of you can master them pretty quickly. I don't know, mm -hmm. for the most part, and yeah, dominate. Yeah, the you know the the thing that's funny about that game is what you were talking about the isolation view, the diagonal. Yeah, is a lot of people think that NBA Live started doing that first, but. Little did they know, NBA Action 94 was doing that first. And the fact that they had Marv Albert as an announcer, that's huge. I mean, he was pretty much the most popular national announcer for basketball games at the time. Uh, and it doesn't look like the players on an NBA Action uh, move quite like the players on NBA Live. Like the NBA Live players, they're kind of like all over the place. And it looks like you, you have a little bit more control on uh, NBA Action 94. Uh, yeah. I had this I had one of these games on the Game Gear. So my okay. My experience was much different than playing it on the Genesis. So uh, this is this is one I have to pick up and try cuz I told I totally missed out on it, the NBA Action series on the Sega Genesis, well, but well, don't you have you'll have a, a pretty large support group that you can join if you want to because okay. I, I I have not talked to many people in my day that are familiar with this game. <laughs> what do you got? All right, next game for me is also a basketball game. It's Looney Tunes B-Ball. Yeah, yeah. This was obviously kind of a surprise, but then once I thought about it for two seconds, I was like, that's a good game. Yeah, this is, this is developed by Sunsoft, and – uh it's kind of like – it's pretty much like an NBA Jam type game. It's two-on-two, two, but it looks great. Like, it looks like the cartoon. And you have eight characters you could choose from. You know, you got Bugs Bunny, Tasmanian Devil, Daffy Duck. At the time, Looney Tunes was still huge for me. Yeah. Uh, and Space Jam actually came out after this game. 
But I, I played this before Space Jam, so you could imagine the hype for Space Jam after liking and playing this game. This isn't one that I owned back in the day, but I had a friend that had this game, and I, I wanted to go over to his house just so I could play it. Yeah. Uh, the cool thing about it, it's, you know, since there is a limited amount of characters, you – they they all look different, of course, because they're their cartoon counterpart, and they all have power ups and and movements that they do that resemble what they would do in the cartoon. So, like if you're swatting the ball at Tasmanian Devil, you're doing the little spin, you yeah. know. If you're shooting the three pointer with Marvin the Martian, the ball's going up, and there's a magnet that carries it over to the rim. Oh my god! Yeah, Marvin the Martian was an absolute assassin on that game. <laughs> He yeah, like yeah three-point threat, man. He's you don't want to mess with Marvin the Martian in uh, Looney Tunes B ball. Uh, you know, usually like games that try to to rip off other games, yeah, are yeah. they usually don't live up to it. But this one for sure did. I uh, I bet there's a lot of people that just were like, oh, cool, you know, Looney Tunes NBA Jam, nice try, I'll pass. Yeah. And you could even, you know, it pretty much had power-ups just like NBA Jam TE. Yeah. You, you kind of collected gems on the court, but you got to choose which special move you use. Whereas like NBA Jam TE, you run over the certain icons and then you could like dunk full court. But that was the only way you could do it. You didn't get to choose through them. Um, the game would be higher for me if you could change the controls because uh, th there's no option for that. And then also the computer is just way too hard. I mean, for a game that's targeted at kids because it's a wow. Looney Tunes game, it's extremely difficult to yeah, be a computer at a certain point. Playing a, I definitely played this game, like, a, a few – a lot. Um, you know, I don't know if it was a rental or if a friend had it. Um, I think we just maybe rented it, like, once or twice, you know, because we liked it. It was good. Um, obviously, there was tons of other – sports games this is like the peak era for me uh right when this came out with just different so many options but that this game was fun man i like just totally remember this game being a blast so great call we got i think we're doing a pretty good job bringing some sleepers out yeah this, this one's probably a, a sleeper for some and i think nba action 94 was definitely that as well indeed all righty so back on the gridiron we're at number 15 here, right? Yep, 15. I got I got college football 97 for the Sega with the little yellow doohickey here. What the hell is that? I don't know. But it's uh, cool. I mean, it does it def Listen, we're talking look at the look at the overall stature versus NFL. I mean, which game do you want to play? <laughs> Let's see, I think I'll take this one. It's a beast. You know what? I kind of compare that little yellow thing on the cartridge to like having a like Nike air bubbles, like the shoes. Yeah. You know, they just looked cooler because you had like the little air pockets at the bottom. That's kind of what that reminded me of back in the day. Like, oh, this this game has power or something. Yeah. I, that was thing. definitely my thought. I was like, oh, we got we got something. This is a little extra here. <laughs> yeah. So uh no, but this is, you know, Madden ninety seven. I didn't have I had this instead. It has to be like pretty similar, you know. The gameplay is probably pretty similar. Like they just by this time EA had figured out how to make a football game where you you know the passing was cool like it wasn't so just a random huck it up you you actually you could read the defense figure some stuff out and I just remember like it seemed like there was a lot of innovations on the you know on for the gameplay um, but why this why I had no interest in getting a Madden game after getting this was that now we got stuff like the option in the mix. Yeah. And we got, we can run, we can run the wishbone. We can create a guy for whatever reason. I was remember when I got this game, I had the LSU tigers and I was really fired up about Kevin Falk. It's like, I'm going to create Kevin Falk. That's the, that's the superstar of the college football scene, but they already had a guy who was probably supposed to be Kevin Falk, but, or something. So I had the wishbone with the Kevin Falk and the, the guy who should have been Kevin Falk. And then, you know, probably like a decent backup too, in case one of those guys got tired and I was just going this way, that way I was just terrorizing fools. So, um, yeah, it was fun. And then this is kind of, 
you know, at the time, there was this, a lot of controversy in the college game about, you know, like seemed like multiple years and right around this time, you'd have, you know, like Penn State went to the Rose Bowl undefeated. And this is so this is before the BCS. So you wouldn't always have the one play the two. So you would have, you know, like right. the, the, there could be a Big Ten or Pac-10 team vying for the national championship and then someone else. You know, they had all, all the rest of the conferences kind of agree, like, are we going to put the top two? But it didn't always inc- wasn't always the top two. So you, you could have a some controversy. You know, people were getting really tired of the stupid bowl games at this point. This game, I don't know, was like, you know what? You guys want to do a playoff? Go for it. Just set it to a playoff. So yeah. you could make it up to 12 teams or 16 teams, which, by the way, in real life, why the hell not? More yeah, games. Exactly. Bring it. Who wants? Who doesn't want to see, like, more, like, small schools in the mix? And uh, anyway, but um, it was fun. I mean, just just because really, like, nine, I think college 96, I might have played. It had – I want to say like 40 teams, you know, which was a big deal. This game had over like 110 teams, you know, so like everybody basically in Division One, aside from like a couple total, you know, weak sauce teams. Um, and that that just – I mean, because back in the day when I was a sports fan, like I would just – I really gravitate towards college. Like I would just like, you know, is there some more teams out there that I could learn about? So like college was – I just love that aspect. So here's a game that gives you 112 teams and you could, you know, it's just, it was endless. You know, the amount, the amount of fun that could be had, like at the time was a really big deal. Yeah. And you know, the college franchise got better, you know, on PlayStation, it got really good. It was, I'm not saying this is the best college game. It's the game that I played. It's on my list. All the ones that came out after, especially on the PlayStation were awesome. You know, getting recruiting in the mix that, I mean, look, I think we're both in the same vein that the college football games that came out in like the PlayStation two era, those are some of the better sports games ever. Right. Yes. Yes. I was, you know, going to say that the fact that you have different formations, the option, it always ticked me off, especially in the PS two era that you couldn't lateral the ball in Madden. It's like, it's something you could really do in a football game. Like, why can't I lateral in this game, but I could do it in NCAA? I know. That was – it was so frustrating. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. I'm like, man, this would be so fun to, like, screw around and lateral in Madden, but I, they won't let me do it. Oh, I know. And, then, and you could – oh, my God. You, you, you'd have some disasters trying to run the option of this game. But it was dominant when you pulled it off. So. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think this one holds up as far as gameplay today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, you know, it, uh, it's, um, still when it, you know, the, probably the main reason I wouldn't want to play this versus technical Super Bowl is the passing is still just kind of like, there's a lot of just hucking it up, hoping something good happens, you know, but it just, it's good enough. Um, I think it would hold up pretty good. Like there's a decent amount of strategy you can call audibles, which wasn't always a thing. I might've jumped, that might've got in there a couple years before that. Um, so, you know, you can actually, it, it'd be a good, you know, man on man game. Like there wouldn't be a lot of cheap stuff. You could probably at least put your defense in the right spot to stop like a money play. But, um, I think it'd be fun. It, it's still, you, you, I don't know if you'd really, like if you had like a power run team versus a super awesome pass team, like I'm sure Peyton Manning's on that game. He's probably pretty dominant, but I think you still want to, you'd like want Nebraska every time. Right. Um, probably i don't know it'd be fun it'd be fun to find out. i haven't played this one like hardcore in a really long time but it's uh i feel very strong about it it's definitely one of my most played games um of all time this this is one i'm gonna have to check out i haven't played i don't think i've played it ever to be honest with you and the great thing about being a retro sports game enthusiast is you could probably just go to the local game store and pick it up for about two bucks. I was gonna say, I was gonna have say. all the experiences we just talked about with this one. <laughs> yeah, I advise all of you to take a look. It's uh, worth the two um, bucks. Yeah, you, know, you gotta. Yeah, I don't. Honestly, though, you're right though, because there's all those other college games that came after are so good. They're so deep. 
it's hard to really convince somebody to play this. But if you got if you had a couple buddies together and ran a season, put yourself all in the same conference or something, I mean, it'd be you'd you'd have a pretty freaking awesome time on yeah. that game. You know what? The, just a quick point: the '97 games are weird because it's like they were at their best on the Super Nintendo and uh, Sega Genesis, but then you also had the the PlayStation and the you know 64 coming out so you had way better graphics you know better sound all that stuff but they were still in their infancy and development so uh you know there's kind of some weird crossover with those which yeah. ones are actually better here we go i can't believe i couldn't find this until now I just, it was in the shadows this this is what i should have been playing the whole time anyway you go ahead with yours and i'm gonna load this up Number 15 is the oldest game on my list, and it's from the Atari 2600 by probably the best company that has made games for the Atari 2600, and that's Activision with Ice Hockey. Now, Ice Hockey is just a two-on-two hockey game. It's much different than playing two-on-two open ice challenge, but... The mechanics in this one, the simple gameplay, makes for a really intense battle. You know, depending on where the puck is with with the player, it depends on who you control. So you, you're either controlling the, the guy attacking the net or the goalie. And you could get in some real tough battles for the puck. And if you're using the joystick for this one, uh, you know, moving moving over, moving your guy around the ice can be real intense. Uh, I experienced this one a lot on the anthology on the PlayStation 2 hmm. or the Activision anthology with a bunch of their games. And since Activision had pretty much all the good games, that game is worth picking up because it also had 80s music playing in the background. Uh, so I played this game a lot with my friend Joe, who kind of was getting out of games at the time, but he still wanted to play like atari games and listen to 80s music so we would just have battles in ice hockey listening to this these these 80s pop songs and just going back and forth and just having a great time with ice hockey um so I that's can, I that, that i don't have to convince you that, that i can envision that being a good time yeah it, it was a really good time you know we were just play, playing some ice hockey you know, PlayStation 2, we could be playing Grand Theft Auto 3 or we could be playing ice hockey. So it was just – that's another way to experience this game. But also on the Atari, it's a blast using the joystick and pounding the one button. That's also a great way to play it. So ice hockey makes 15th on uh, my list. So so you, this is a discovery then. It was, did you have any history with the Atari, you know, 2600? Yes, I did. Uh, basically, when I was five years old, I played Nintendo at my cousin's house. And uh, after that, obviously, I wanted video games. Uh, the first game I ever played was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. So I'm like, and I like the turtles. So I'm like, I got to get one. I got to get me some video games. In nice. my life. So, of course, I didn't get that right away. But, uh, you know, my grandpa picked up atari 2600 from a rummage sale or whatever and he's like oh let's play this so i'm playing i played atari 2600 with my dad and my grandpa they're showing me how to play the game at, at like you know five years old so i'm playing like barnstormer pitfall okay. games like that so ice hockey wasn't huge back then for me but exploring the console later and playing it on the playstation 2 i'm like th this is one of the best just like Simple, simple yeah games it's a lot of fun i was definitely aware that this was a quality game but i had, I had never played it um but Tari, you know i'm a huge retro game enthusiast but it's, it is tough for the most part it's tough to get in Atari. but the problem with atari is this is a mixed bag like you you got a couple you know you got some games that are okay and then just so many that are just like wait a minute, what what's going on here exactly <laughs> yeah uh, but you know, I, I could see this. You know, this at the this is kind of like is basically like a very evolved version of Pong. This game, you know, pretty much. Yeah, you you have the two players and you control the puck. So 
yeah, it's it's very evolved version of it. Um, there's an, oh, there's also another one on one hockey game that I really like at the arcade that has the same intensity. It's called Hat Trick. Okay. And that also came out in the Atari seventy eight hundred, which I don't have. I've never played that version, but that that game is even though it's one on one, it has the same type of intensity as ice hockey on Atari twenty six hundred. All right. You, you hear this? You hear this at all? I'm hearing it. You know that? I know it. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty epic track right there. Pretty sure we've uh, talked about this company a couple times before. A few times. Got <laughs> the Tecmo Bowl here. That's what I got for fourteen. Um, the game lost to most of the people I know because I know a lot of people for Tecmo Super Bowl tournaments. But this game, when it came out, was, I mean, it just laid waste to all sports games before it, you know. It, we're talking, this is basically, I guess we, we, we talked about last the last time we were together, but the, uh, you know, there was a game that came out, like play action. Uh, it wasn't play action, but it was something that had pro players. But this one had pro players, and it was actually worth playing. Not only was it worth playing, it's, it's epic gameplay. You know, just really fun. And, yeah, the different players had different abilities. They were faster, you know. That was basically the main thing was the better guys were faster than other guys. You know, as far as catching it, if you, if you were there, you caught it. If you were there on defense, you intercepted it. But, you know, I always swore that like, guys like Rice and Largent could make a few extra grabs, you know, like a couple miracle grabs, even if they were covered. But, uh, yeah, no, this game, I mean, this game was just really fun. You know, obviously Tecmo Super Bowl. Hopefully, if you're watching this, you know what Tecmo Super Bowl is about. What's different about this game? I mean, it's just simpler. Um, but I there's a 0% chance that if you didn't pick this game up, you wouldn't be having fun, right? Yeah. It, it's it's just really good core solid gameplay. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like it is it. It's just it's tough because it's just it got totally destroyed by the sequel, as far as overall awesomeness. But um, yeah, there was a. I remember the time before Tecmo Super Bowl, and Tecmo Bowl was the king for sure. Um, you know this in, a, in another game that we'll bring up but uh you know for football action this for about a two-year span tech mobile owned it and there wasn't really a close second at all yeah uh you know in 1988 this there's nothing that you could compare to the gameplay of this and the fact that like you said the players some guys throw faster than others some guys move across the field quicker uh it's just a it's just an excellent experience uh i had to go back to this game retroactively after playing tecmo super bowl so my enthusiasm for it wasn't quite what it would have been if i played it at the time it'd be tough for somebody who was all about tecmo super bowl to to go back it really would be yeah but i have i have tremendous respect for the game and what it led led on to and it's it's the second best nes football game in my opinion yeah i you know? honestly for me i think my like probably football is like kind of my you know it's something i fought like spent a lot of time on over the course of a season or a year uh i'm a pretty big football fan like i know a lot about football i'm kind of i would say i'm a football expert when i played this when i was nine years old or eight years old for the first time, I didn't know jack squat. I didn't really even care. I had no interest in football at all. Like, I didn't even know like the rules when I played this for the first time. Like, I didn't know what downs were or what you know difference between punt and the kick. You know, but this game. I mean, like, if it wasn't for this game, I don't. I don't know if that trajectory would have happened. I've since then. I've basically become obsessed with the sport. So, yeah, cool. take my ball. Yeah, I mean. I'll, I'll talk about it later. I, I don't think it, it's a mystery that uh, NBA Jam is a big time game for me. That's pretty much what that experience did. 
for me. And that's why basketball is probably my favorite sport. Um, so gaming, gaming had a huge impact. Uh, so it, so let me move on to the next one. So we go, we make a huge jump from range in the Atari 2600 to the N64. And it's another wrestling game, WCW NWO Revenge. Uh, this one, I wasn't huge in the WCW, but once I played this game, I was like, wow, th this gameplay is awesome. It looked better than Warzone. It was, the controls were much similar or, or much more simple. Uh, this, even though it was published by THQ, Aki Corporation is a Japanese company that developed this version of the game. Uh, it allowed you to do like a 40 man battle Royal, which no other game until I played this game did a Royal Rumble correctly. In my opinion, uh, even though there was a game called Royal Rumble like yeah. this, this was like the ultimate Royal Rumble experience. Uh, and, you know, each guy had their finishers and it had a huge roster of characters. The only thing that was weird about this, these uh, games compared to Warzone is there was just music. There was no, hmm. there was no commentary at all. That was like game, the one. Which came out first, by the way? What's that? Which game came out first, that or Warzone? They're actually pretty close in the timeline. Warzone came out in 1998 in july and then this one came out in october of 1980 or 1998 so very close uh in in time this one was like kind of a sleeper for me i i went over to a friend's house that you know was just a, a friend from school that i didn't hang out with that much and he had this game and i'm like wow this like i need to get a nintendo 64 this wow. game so the that, best wrestling really game that i've ever played so that game brought you to the N64 fall then. Yeah, well, there were other games too. Right. Like, the because I mainly I had the PlayStation and I had friends that had Nintendo 64. And then the more games that I would experience, I'm like, I just got to get one of these. Like, there's games that I just can't not play. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I think I had not very many friends that had PlayStation. I had a lot of friends that had N64s. The vast majority of them have that game. That was like a must own. You know what? And there was another wrestling game called WCW NWO World Tour. Yeah. That was also developed by the same company. It had similar gameplay, uh, just not as many different type of matches that you could do in this one. And also, this is when WCW was like getting really hot because – not only did you have the NWO guys with uh, Hollywood Hogan, Kevin Nash, but as you can see on the 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 cover right here, you got Goldberg. Goldberg was huge. He was like undefeated. You know, he kind of rivaled Stone Cold in the WWF, and it was the first game that had. Lost him. You there? Yeah, I'm back. What's going on? It said an error. I don't know if it's if it's maybe, uh maybe I didn't actually lose you. I don't know if it's still going. Okay. It says it says it's still going. All right. Keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. It was only a minor deal. Hopefully we didn't lose everybody. <laughs> anyway, um, cool beans. So yeah. Anyway, let's keep, keep let's. Uh, so we're just wrapping up uh, uh, WCW, um, which was number fourteen for you. It was yes, fourteen. So got a few more. We got a few more. We could do this. This is good. It's good thing we broke it up. Can you imagine if we're trying to do twenty five. But uh, anyway. <laughs> 
I couldn't get this game. I'm really sad I can't get this game, the one that you gave me, to work on my NES. You jerk. It's Tecmo, <laughs> Tecmo NBA Basketball. So this guy had this game as a kid. I don't know what the, where the hell it is. I don't know what happened to it. But I played it a ton. Um, recently, I somehow, by some miracle, ended up putting up 47 points on some kid in, a de- in the Detroit Kumite. Tecmo Super Bowl tournament. And because of that, I won NBA Tecmo NBA basketball for the NES. That was my prize. Is that how they gave it away? What? Is that how they gave it away? You just pour 47 points on so someone? Whoever had the most points in the game. Oh, okay. That's and cool. Of course, the entire tournament. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even really – I had was not really dialed into that at all. And then at the end, it was like, DT. And I'm like, yeah. Hell yeah. I, I don't know where my – version of this i haven't played this in years freaking <laughs> love it so real but so okay so this game first of all came out in for the super nintendo 2 um i did they're too damn close for me to decide one or the other i just they're lumped here super interesting debate they're they're just very close super nintendo i think is clearly better like if you if you if you want to play one or the other, definitely play the Super Nintendo version. Um, but this one came out first, and the Super Nintendo version is really a lot like it. So I'm given uh, the NES version is officially the entry in this countdown. Um, basically, the Super it's just it's crisper. It's really not much difference. They had, I think it's the next year or two in rosters, so they're two different rosters, but. Um, it's the gameplay is very similar. It's it's just fun. I mean, it's just fun arcade action with every single player on every single team in the NBA. And um, you know, when I got it, I remember kind of being disappointed, like the first time I played it, because it I don't know what I was expecting. Like I was expecting it to be Tecmo Super Bowl, you know, level awesome. And I just remember not really liking it for whatever reason. Um, it, it definitely has a bunch of really dumb things about it, um, such as, you know, really, like, size doesn't – everybody's the same size. <laughs> One of our beefs with give and go. Yeah, and exactly. A big guys are mostly worthless unless they can, you know, hold – unless they're good shot blockers. Um, for the most part, you don't want any guy who's slow out there because it's just a speed game for the most part. Yeah. And then, you know, shooting is a factor. Um, and so, obviously, you know, you end up going with – if you're playing this competitively, you'll, you'll typically end up with, like, one pretty decent forward or center out there and then, like, three or maybe even four guards. You know, just – like that's kind of the way it goes for the most part. Like, that seems to work the best. Muggsy Bogues can block shot. I mean, it's – you know, it, it – uh, we always, we're always using Muggsy Bogues as the example. But uh, – <laughs> well, it's five three. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, at the end of the day, though, like if you're playing this game, you're it's a great battle. Um, you know, versus you know, if two guys are playing this game. There, it's a really good battle. Yeah, so. I would I would say it's it's arguably the best basketball game on the NES. Some people would say arch rivals. Sure. I don't really know. You know, double dribble gets thrown in there. Yeah, a lot of people really like Double Dribble. Yeah, right? and I, th- I think that's just because of the time it came out, really. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you compare Double Dribble to Tecmo NBA Basketball. I think we actually had to wait till 1992. For yeah. That. So, yeah, 1992. Um, one of the other things about Tecmo NBA Basketball is the, the menu music is incredible. It's oh, one of the best. That's why I was really excited. I've been trying to get this to freaking play. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm sure I just got to you know clean it out. But uh, I was trying to get it on there because that, that would have been some nice accompaniment for what we're doing here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's sweet. Yeah, once you know, once you get into it, it's kind of like just the vibe of it is really good. You know, it's similar to Tecmo Super Bowl in that vein, where it's like you got thumping music and just like the little things that they added. You know, little cut scenes and stuff. It just really makes it a pretty epic feel. And then you know, you can get in the playoffs and stuff, and it, it, you can do the whole season if you want. It's pretty awesome. And, and the profile pictures they do have in this one, they're they're even better than the ones in Tec- in Tecmo Super Bowl. They're great. They're fantastic, and they're very, for the most part, accurate. 
Yeah, they so it's a it's a great game. Good choice on that one. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna bust out my 13th game, and it's uh, Ken Griffey Jr.'s winning run on the Super Nintendo. This yeah. is the later Ken Griffey, uh, developed by Rareware, that also made Donkey Kong Country on the system. This one's published by Nintendo. Uh, this game looked incredible for a Super Nintendo game. Uh, gave you that 3D feel. Of course, it featured Ken Griffey Jr. He was the only major league player in the game, although all the teams were there. So opposite of what you see on some of these old games. Yeah. Uh, for me, this one, it was just a great time. Simple, uh, simple baseball experience. I just had a really good time like trying to hit home runs in this. And the one thing I like about this game is the pitching is similar to like the retro all the retro ones like rbi baseball baseball stars you're not you're you're still not at that point where you're picking change up then curveball then the location like it's not a layered process yeah. you get the ball you throw the pitch it's either you know you're holding right or you're holding left so it's still got that quick retro uh pitching action mm -hmm. uh there's also something that people like in this game where if you just let it idle too long, the umpire will knock on the screen and say, play the game, kid. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot about that. That is epic. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of, you didn't see too much of that back then, but this is just a really good game. It looks like Ken Griffey Jr. when he's up to bat, but even the players on the other teams are kind of like their real life counterpart. Like I know the, the, the White Sox have the big Magoo for Frank Thomas. Yeah, they have great names. I remember, was it uh, Sluggo Steel is Gary Sheffield. Yeah. Yeah, and the one knock I do have on this game, though, is the, f the fielding's easy. It's like the zoomed out view, but it's really hard to get extra bases. Like, they get the ball in super yeah. quick. I remember it being a singles fest. Like just yeah, so thing. you couldn't run extra base. Forget about it. No, yeah, you're pretty much going station to station and trying to hit home runs. That's the only knock on the game. You could get thrown out from the outfield with a slow, Which a slow uh, guy oh, all the time. Oh my gosh, it happens so many times. I so my I love that game. I think it's real quality. I'm glad it's on your list, but uh, it it's not as good as the first one. I had I had to leave it off my list. It just in the end of the day, it was disappointing for me. I played it quite a bit. I had it. I played it, loved it. Um, but at the end of the day, like I just it didn't have the lasting power because I just it just felt like it should have been better. There was just those little those little things were annoying to me. Um, things like what you talked about and kind of like there was certain other things like I feel like if you had like a really fast guy, you could bunt for a base hit like pretty much every time. Like I remember I had Vince Coleman on my team for the Mariners. I think I batted like 700 for the season. <laughs> so Yeah, um, I remember Vince Coleman. <laughs> but uh, no, it was awesome. You know, slight, you hit the ball and make a sweet noise and it would just look cool coming, you know, the little animation where then it would switch to the overhead view. But, you know, and uh, one thing I really liked about that game uh, was that it had a mode where you would climb the ladder, try to beat each team once. You remember that? Yes. That was just, I just thought that was a cool mode. I don't know why more games haven't utilized that. Um, that just felt cool. But at the end of the day, like the first one more, and you'll see, got it coming up the list here. That's how much I like that game. Uh, in the meantime, though, got number 12 for you here. So this is one that I was not expecting to be on your list, and it isn't. But uh, very feel very strongly about putting it as high as I did. And that's Lynx 386 Pro. We're going PC here. <laughs> you uh, just put everyone to bed with this one. Good night. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I'll, I'll make it brief because uh, it seems like you have a, a few more wrestling uh, people in your, uh, you know, sphere of uh, watchers here than golf people. No, but, that's cool. I'm just joking. <laughs> But uh, I like the golf game. Golf games—that's that's that's where it's at for me. Like I think golf 
on in video games is just a, is a match made in heaven. But uh, this this was just a PC game that was epic. Everybody had this game, and it, it just had all these courses. It was super realistic. There's just a lot of um, kind of cool things, like your, your caddy would shout things like, go in the hole, which was a big deal for like 1993 or 94 when this came out. And, oh, you're dancing when you put it on the, on the green. Uh, and it was just, it had, for the time, extremely realistic looking physics. And it really felt like you were playing those courses. Like it looked damn good. And then it came out, then Link CD came out. And that was uh, even better, you know, when, it, when you got the CD-ROM in the mix. Uh, 386 Pro was like a, like a floppy, like the hard floppy disk. What do you call those things? But uh, anyway. <laughs> It was great. I spent a, a shit ton of money adding different courses to this, and I think I had like probably like twenty or so. Um, and that this game just did not get old for a very long time, and it's still. If somebody this is, once again, if someone plays right now, I'm in. But obviously, it uh, has been surpassed in the golf realm of things. But go hey, proceed. You uh. You you have a message from the chat saying I would beat this DT guy in any Tiger game, Tiger Golf. You know, I at first I want to say, bring it, pal. Um, but then I remembered that there's some fr- you could do some freaking damage on Tiger if you could really get dialed in with that. You could start shooting fifty fives and fifty sixes. I was never that good. I I remember other people being better than me. So I'm gonna respectfully give uh give the the uh well who is it the the rogue the gamer okay well you know I'll, I'll give him that one who wants to play links though forget about it you know what i i did like this is the one game like i knew absolutely nothing about i never even heard of it uh i did play pc games but golf was completely off of my radar uh but looking into it not only does it did it have the realism that you were talking about at the time, but they actually had an online tournament, 250 players that played for cash prizes, like the the original esports. Hmm. You know, was something to do with this game, and that, that and that was something I always thought that would would be cool. Is like I've spent so much time playing these games. Yeah. Like, why can't there be competitions where you can actually win money playing some of them, like the ones you love the most? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 why I end up going to Madison every year just for just for the feel of it. But uh, yeah, you know, sure. I mean, there's lots of reasons. Spotted cow being another reason. But uh, <laughs> anyway, what do you got for number twelve here? Number twelve is this is another game where I say like it's not uh, it's not something that I would necessarily recommend you play these days, but I played it so much back when it came out is NBA live 98 on the PlayStation EA sports. Beauty. Timmy Hardaway, you know, yeah. Tim Hardaway on the cover, you know, you get, there's so many sports games that you get when you're a sports fan growing up as a kid. And to be honest, a lot of them, you probably just end up playing versus people you start a season and it just conks out on you well this is not one of those games for me i played through multiple seasons like i was just obsessed with the nba at the time um i had seasons going with friends saved on memory cards my friend joe would sleep over at his house all the time just so we could play nba live seasons um you know i would use the lakers most of the time and try to bring kobe off the bench and score big or he would use the 76ers with Allen Iverson. Uh, The graphics on this one, they don't necessarily hold up too well, but at the time it was a huge jump from NBA Live 97 on the PlayStation. Uh, And and at the time EA Sports also, they were were willing to do deals with other companies to give their game more, uh, uh, like a better feel. They had like the NBA on TBS, is part of it like you know cool. and, then, and then like the i think at the end of the game it's like the sprite player of the game like just little things like that uh but it looked really good compared to the other games i love the music in this game 
I don't know what you classify it as, like a funk type of music, but it's much different than what you hear in basketball games today. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. And, uh, but what I would go back for, and I still do in this one, is the three point shootout. Nice. Three point shootout in this. You could put in multiple players up to eight. You can computer control some. You know, you and a friend can control them. And that's still a really good time is to go through the three point shootout. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that seems like a winner. Once again, I, I don't, I don't know if NBA live 98 came out for the N64. I don't think it did. I don't think so. I think there was a gap there. Uh, it did come out on the super Nintendo. Cause I have that one. That's, that's true. Yeah. So I'm wondering, I'm thinking I must not have had it. Um, I feel like I played it maybe, but I, I, I think the PlayStation is way different. So that's a big blind spot for me. That's a bummer. Sounds like I missed out on some hot NBA action. Yeah. Of which the live franchise was pretty freaking consistent with, um, you know, I'd say over the years, what an interesting sort of legacy they have where it kind of went away for a while, like recently. Um, yes. Yes. They've had a lot. There's been a lot of live games and that'd be fun to kind of look at, go one by one to see like, you know, it's it's kind of like this as far as like, you know, I love it and then love it and then you know. Yeah, like, no, you're right. right. It's a roller coaster with a lot of dips. Yeah, there's some bad moments. live games, but they're most the, the really good ones are at the top, top of the class. Yeah. So, all right, this is I guess the last one for last tonight. one of the night. So pretty epic run so far. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I I really really appreciate wholeheartedly that NHL 94 has lived on. But, at the, you know, I really just, this game, NHL 96 is the one. This is the, this is the list for hockey for me. I see more hockey games. When it comes to hockey, it's NHL 96. This is the one. Um, why is that? It's got, you know, it's fast. Um, it, uh, you don't get that many cheap goals. Um, uh, maybe some of the other ones, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I was never really that great, but we played it a lot. We did usually, you know, there would be the occasional like nine to eight game, you know, for the most part though, it's like four to three. So you get a pretty good amount of games and, you know, you're playing short games. Um, the one weird thing about it. And I, I, if somebody said that this is the reason that this game is not epic, I'd be like, okay is when you go down, okay, so there's three periods, and you go you either go up or down. When you go down, for whatever reason, the defenders, they don't know what the hell's going on. There's all kinds of breakaways. When you go up, it's all clogged up. Makes no sense. But when you're going up, you never get, like, breakaways, easy runs at the goalie. Uh, when you go down, it happens all the time. So it was for years, we were just like, all right, I got the two down periods. Advantage me. You better bring it that one period that you're going down. You know? <laughs> but then somehow out of nowhere, like we just started doing these one timers from like half ice, like from, you know, from the mid, from the, the middle of the ice, uh, you know, like you, you just serve up a one timer and every now and then they just go in. So, and it seemed like, they mostly have, maybe we never tried them going down, but when you went up, you'd just be able to pull off these crazy like slap shots. It was usually like a one timer from, which is from di great distances. And it was really cheap, but it became fun for us. So it ended up Eve tipping, you know, making it even like they, when you're going up, you had very bizarre. This does not really sound like a great avocation for this game. I can <laughs> tell you it was very fun to rip, a freaking one timer from like, you know, seventy feet away, <laughs> and then just have the goalie. <laughs> the goalie was screw up, but it was at the same time. I was like, well, I, at least I did that. I set up a, a shot. You know, the other guy knew that you were going to try to do it. Anyway, it's really stupid. But for the most part, we're talking about fast action, a lot of good checking, and uh, you know, it had this weird spinorama move that you could do on yeah. offense to avoid checks that was not very realistic, but no. it's kind of fun. And, um, 
you know, it just uh, had, a, you know, full NHL experience, full rosters, and the music was incredible. This is the two unlimited opening. Da, 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 yes. da, 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 da. And then, like, it had this menu music that was just pumping. I mean, this was an absolute thrill. Yeah, EA yeah. Sports, they were up in the presentation with this one. They had the the music that you were talking about. They also had the NHL on Fox. Yeah. You know, it had a really good feel to it. Uh, and it's, you know, if you like arcade games, then this this is where it's at. Uh, for the NHL series, in my opinion. It's like yeah. NHL 94 is a good, like, hockey game. There's a little bit more strategy yeah. for that. But then this one's more like arcade action. It's faster. You have that spin move that you're talking about where you can't check, which doesn't make any sense, but it's like an arcade mechanic. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's it's a really good game, really good choice. Yeah, And obviously um, NHL 95, Sagathon is epic too um this is just the this is just my list you know this is the one that stuck with me and uh i freaking played it a lot I've, i still i think if i pop this in right now it still has all my records on there. there's probably one of the users on there that's like you know 298 or something like that you know they're like 200 wins 98 losses and, oh, and like probably like 30 ties or something like that so. <laughs> big winner for me we got a message from the chat. It's Rogue Gamer again. It says, played every NHL since ice hockey. Uh, new ones are cool because um, you can't create your own team and players six for six. So he's into the NHL games. And uh, with my last game for the night, uh, 11th pick, I, I kind of surprised myself with this one because I had my list for a while and I'm – reflecting i'm like hmm, I, don't, I don't know is this is this the game that i hold in that high regard but it's blades of steel another konami game both closing with, with the ice here yeah both closing with the ice uh you know it doesn't have some of the depth that we talked about in ice hockey but it's just good it's just good hockey fun you know yeah. it's a pick up and play type of game there's fights in the, in there. You you know, it, it, it has good music. It says, with the pass, with the pass. It has, you know, at the time, talking in a Nintendo game, that's a big deal. Uh, also, I just like the shooting because in games like NHL 94, even NHL 96, I have a hard time scoring at times. But in this one, it's very straightforward. It's like, this little arrow moves back and forth on the goal, so you know exactly where the shot's going to go. Yeah, so you got to time it to go around the the goalie, and I think that's what I like most about this game is that there it's not just like up to chance per se. You you know exactly where you're shooting the puck. That's I mean, listen, that's the only reason. There's this is one reason why it's not on my list. I didn't play it. That's it. <laughs> Just one of those things where it just didn't happen, you know. It just didn't happen. Sometimes it doesn't happen for you. <laughs> I'm like Mr. NES, but uh, I played it recently with a friend who kind of had pretty good experience. I played like two games, and I was just like, "Oh yeah, this game's awesome." You know, it's just there's really not much to it. I don't. The only the other beef I have with it, it seemed like Konami when we got the track and field games. You got this game. It seemed like they just wanted to murder your fingers, like. This game was a grind, man. Blades of Steel, like you, you know, it was fast paced, and you got to really, you know, it was like nonstop action. Yeah, so. man. really fast paced game. Your thumb's gonna get worn out on the D pad from playing this one for sure. But uh, it's it's one you could put in and enjoy. It's you know comparing it because it came out in a similar time period as Double Dribble, like. This game is way better, in my opinion. Oh, it's so much deeper. Yeah. So, yeah, that rounds out my uh, 25 through 11. That's a pretty strong way to finish. I mean, you're talking classic stuff. I had Pro Wrestling start, Blades of Steel. So, you know, we're, we respect the classics, and we got all these other ones kind of mixed in. But I think we're backing them up in a strong way. I think our lists are pretty infallible. Yeah, and, you know, I hope that people – that are that watch this tonight and watch this later will 
want to pick up some of these games and play them. And, you know, retro sports games, like I said, most of them are pretty cheap. So, and it with was, all, and with all the widely available at the time. So, yeah. And, and with, yeah. <laughs> and, and with all these games out there, you know, it's easy to miss a bunch. That's why our lists are so wildly different to this point. I think as we get to the, the top 10, we will see some crossover, but you know, 11 through 25, you know, we, do we even have any of the same games? Uh, that I, we had, we have had zero crosswalk so far. That's, yeah. awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. So there you have it. There's a wide variety of good games in the retro sports gaming world. Nice. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, back in the day, you know, this, the retro era, the marketing, was pretty key as far as whether or not you'd end up with a game or not. But right. you had to really exactly. play these games to find out the nuances and you know how good they were. So this is we're doing we're doing some very important work here years later. Yeah, if you didn't get the right Game Pro magazine, Electronic Monthly, or uh, Nintendo Power, then you just might have missed some of these. So uh, DT, thank you for joining me tonight. Next time. We, uh, we meet up, we'll do our top 10 and honorable mentions. Right on. I'm looking forward to doing that. It's going to be a good video. Um, any, uh, any closing thoughts before we close out tonight? No, it was fun. It was fun to hear about your list. Um, I feel like we, we both had a lot of similar takes, um, you know, to work kind of – it's it's good. This is like there's a lot. We're we're getting pretty deep with this stuff, which is good because, you know, when it comes to sports games, like it's so easy to buy a crappy game. This and it could be very subtle what makes a game great. But we're getting in. We're trying to hit on that stuff, and I think that I feel like this is good. This is good. To put this out there. Yeah, because you know the retro gaming stores these days, half of them are filled just with sports titles. And people need some guidance on some of these. You know, everyone knows there are NBA jams and Tecmo Super Bowls, but, you know, some of these other games, NBA action, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope I mean, basketball, too. there's some gems out there. You gotta get, yeah, you got to take a look, man. Take a look at your Tecmo Super Bowl uh, two if you find that one, Tecmo Super Bowl three, you know. Yeah. Um, you might not know, man. I know some of these ones, though, like they have the name, but they don't got the game. You know what I mean? Yep, that's exactly it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll catch you next time, and uh, wish you a happy one. And uh, we'll we'll get together soon to uh, go over some more of these classics. For sure. All right, guys. Everyone have a good night, and thanks for watching. Peace out.